Hey guys! Today I'm super excited because I get to finally just sit down and paint, and it's been so long since I've been able to do so. I didn't know what to paint, but I knew that I wanted to use a lot of different colors, and I decided that the Bleeding Heart Dove is just absolutely stunning, and it takes so many colors, and I thought, I've never painted one before! Let's, let's paint a bird! So today I'm going to be using gouache, and it's definitely in my top three art mediums. There's two big types. There is a type of gouache that's kind of like the standard one, and it reactivates with water. It's like a watercolor that's opaque. The other type of gouache is called an acrylic gouache, and it's like kind of a light version of an acrylic paint, to put it simply. <laughs> but they're both they're both just a type of paint, and. One of the things I always end up doing whenever I paint is I forget that I have a palette and I just start mixing on paper and this is part of why I'm really bad with acrylics because I'll just start mixing on the paper and then the paint gets thick and then the paint gets muddy and it's just a nightmare. It works sometimes, but a lot of times it's detrimental to my artwork. And you can definitely see when I start doing the yellow breast of the bird that I start to kind of sink back into my old habits. And then I realize, oh no, I need to use the palette. And it's a force of habit. I don't know how I learned this bad habit, but I'm gonna advocate use a palette. Very useful. Whatever you have laying around will work as a palette. This is a piece of acrylic that I cut off of a display a few months ago. So a bleeding heart dove, they have this bright red splotch in the middle of their chest that looks like it's bleeding, and I'm a little offended that I don't see these birds around more often in illustration. And now that I'm starting to work on the yellow, you're going to definitely see that I'm getting tired and I'm starting to get a little bit lazy with it. and. I just start kind of dabbing the paint on and then I start doing my old habit of just mixing the paint on the paper. And I do catch myself and I go back to using the palette, but it's a hard habit to break, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't want it to look super smooth, so I'm just kind of blobbing the paintbrush on to try and get a little bit of texture to make it look a little bit more like feathers. And then because I'm going to be doing a green background, I add a little bit of green to the bird's breast. And then just going in with a little bit of that red to kind of blend it all together and I had an errant splotch of red that I had to go and fix. Luckily, it's paint and it dries quick and you can just paint over your mistakes. <laughs> And I didn't realize that my camera died while I was doing the wing, and I kind of wish that it hadn't died because I don't remember how I did it, and I really liked how the colors turned out, and I like the effect. And now I'm gonna have to practice and try to recreate it on my own. <laughs> Another thing I've learned with wash, and I guess technically by that way also acrylic, is layering is so important because I, I always just try and put it all on one layer, call it done, and for gouache it really works better, for me at least, to lay down a color, blend stuff in, let it dry. The key point is let it dry, which I'm, I'm so impatient when it comes to art because I'm always just so excited to be painting. I just want to keep going and it's like, nope, let this part dry move on to another part, come back to it, and in the end it does make for a better piece for me personally. Another important thing about wash is if you like to work in layers like I do, it's very good to lay down like the acrylic wash in the background because acrylic wash does not reactivate with water and the normal wash does reactivate with water. So if you're going to be doing a lot of layers, a layer or two of the acrylic wash as your base and then the rest of the gouache on top works really well. I don't have a big enough selection to really put that into practice at this point in time. I mostly have acrylic wash and I've got a 
couple tubes of just the standard stuff and it makes a huge difference. And another problem I have is I always over blend and I'm trying so hard lately to not over blend and the acrylic wash kind of stops me from over blending because once it's done, it's done. You have to completely go over it. I did also in this piece just playing around and I decided to try a different a different method for the background. Normally what I would have done is just painted this background leaf by leaf. I would have painted the upper left leaf to start and I would have just kind of worked my way around the frame and I decided that let's try laying down base colors. So I started by filling in all the dark green areas and then I went through and started laying down base color of all the leaves. A good third of this video was originally just painting the leaves. There were so many leaves. This is officially after painting this. It's a no leaf zone. I did hit an area as you can probably see where I just, I started over blending the leaves and I was like, nope, gotta just move on. We'll come back to these leaves later. Some of the leaves I didn't come back to. It was a good experiment, but I don't think I want to paint another leaf for a while. Also, if anyone has any other ideas on cool looking birds, let me know because I definitely want to paint more birds. I had so much fun with this one. I do want to paint another uh, a golden pheasant. They're really cool and unique looking birds. I want to paint a quail. They're so round. That little bobble on their heads is so cute when they run. Uh, my grandma has a family of quails that lives near their house and they are just the cutest birds ever. They just all run up in a little group, peck at the bird feeder, run away. And I love them so much. I also follow a lady on Twitter and she has these princess parrots and I want to paint one of those too. They're just so pretty and pastel. I think that once I start painting a few more of these, I'm gonna make them into a sticker set because I just love turning my art into stickers and stickers are gonna forever be my weakness. <laughs> But back to the art, <laughs> back to this painting I'm currently working on. <laughs> Since I didn't tape the sides of this down, I ended up putting a piece of paper behind it and that's just to help prevent the paint from getting on my desk. Even though it is water-based, it is still a bit of a pain to have to clean up, so I was just trying to prevent that as much as possible. And I did also use a reference for this for both the bird and the leaves because references are so important. On the upper left area, that's pretty much the way I would have painted leaves if I didn't have a reference, but since I had a reference for different leaves, I have a few different shapes that I wouldn't normally have and I tried to paint them with a little bit different shading than I normally would. And then once everything was completely dry, I came back the next day and did a little bit more detailing and I really like how this one turned out, to be honest. I did try using a little bit different techniques than I normally would have, and I think overall I did learn a lot painting this. I am still definitely a novice when it comes to painting with gouache, even though it's one of my favorite mediums. There's just so much to learn about painting, and there's always so much to keep in mind when you are painting. And you can see that I'm trying to use other tones and shades. I didn't want it to be just a dark green, a medium green, and a light green, so I mixed up a yellowy color. On some of the leaves I threw in an orangey tone, and that's just to add variety to the background, makes the leaves look a little bit more realistic because leaves aren't all just the same green color, and I wanted this to be a very lush green background, and if I was going to spend so much time and energy on the leaves, and I wanted them to pop off the canvas a little bit more than if they were just a green, a medium green, and then a light green for the highlight. And then another problem I had with the background, which is another thing I'm trying to get better at, is I tend to water my paints down a little too much. If I don't want to mix more on the palette, I'll just add water to it, which with gouache is okay because it's literally it's literally watercolor with like I believe chalk added to it and that's what makes a gouache. Like for making paint, you have your pigment, you have your binder, 
and then and then everything else is kind of fair game. So if you're making a watercolor, you would have whatever you're using as a pigment, let's say you've got like iron oxide, and then you've got your binder, which is usually a combination of gum arabic and water and glycerin. Uh, a drop of honey. It helps your paints reactivate easily. And then to make it opaque, you have to add something else. And I believe when I was looking into making it, you had to add a chalk. And I'm betting you could probably powder up some shells and add it to make it blonde. Maybe I need to experiment if I can get my hands on a respirator. I haven't made paint with shells yet because I don't want to get shells in my lungs. And like, I've got a cloth mask, which is fine, but it, it's not like the respirator, and respirators are really expensive right now. But yeah, so back to the leaves, <laughs> I'm on a tangent about paint making, it's a new hobby of mine and I love it, but yeah, just trying so hard not to overwork things, and trying so hard not to overblend things, it's it's an ongoing process, I have a lot more to learn, and oh, oh, Ross, it's the joy of painting! <laughs> uh, it's just, the more you do it, the more you're gonna learn, and because it had been so long and so few and far between when I get to paint these days, it's, it's just, it's fun, it's nice, I highly recommend painting. And I will say, this is one of my, like, one of my more detailed backgrounds. I usually just do like a wash of color for a background and I've been trying to be more detailed and I will say this is one of my, my more detailed backgrounds. I usually just do like a wash of color for a background and I've been trying to be more detailed and that's a process as well. Alright, we're coming up to the end of this triathlon. <laughs> I finally, I finished the leaves and I thought that painting could use a little something extra. So I took some washi tape and these mica watercolors and decided that I wanted a little illustrative flair. So I laid down the washi tape to get a very very thin line because there's no way I can make a thin enough line with my paintbrush. I know myself too well. So I laid down the washi tape Lay down the thing of, lay down the layer of the watercolor, let it dry, peeled up the tape, wash, rinse, repeat, and it made a really cool effect. Luckily, these Fine Tech watercolors dry really quick, so I didn't have to just wait around for an hour. And overall, I think the effect was really cool, and I definitely want to play around with this more in the future. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!